Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the first in a series of videos that I'm doing as a countdown to my 50th birthday. Uh, just as a recap, I did a little uh, intro to this series a couple months ago just to kind of announce that I'm, I'm doing this. But just as a, as a uh, quick recap to uh, introduce this uh, little series again, just to remind everyone of what's, what I'm doing. <laughs> so when I started this channel 10 years ago, I started it with a countdown to my 40th birthday. Um, I figured it would be a fun little thing for me to be able to look back on and reflect on my life up until that point. And uh, it's been 10 years and I decided I wanted to do this again. Um, this time uh, with, the, with the original one, I kind of did like one memory um, every year of my life up until 40, so I had like 40 videos for that. Um, this time it's going to be a series of 14 videos. The first four decades I'm kind of consolidating into into separate four separate videos, so I have today I'm going to talk about uh, my memories of age, you know, uh, infancy to 10. Obviously some of those memories are more memories of stories I was told as a child rather than um, my actual memories, although my, my memories actually go back quite far compared to a lot of people I know. I can remember all the way back to age three. So um, I've got quite a few memories of those first 10 years. And then, uh, of course, then it'll be 11 to 20, 21 to 30, and 31 to 40. And so that'll be the first four videos in the series. And then from there, I'm going to go into like a yearly thing like I did last time, uh, starting with age 41, etc. And a final video will land on my birthday when I turn 50. So, uh, I, you know, and I'm not doing this necessarily because I think anyone is gives two shits about me or my life or my memories or whatever. Uh, some of you do, and, and if you do, great. Hi, welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, if you don't, well, why are you here, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, but I'm doing this for myself, primarily. And I'm doing this because, you know, who knows in 10, 20, 30 years if my, um, you know, if I develop dementia or something, you know, something to look back and say, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> so these are basically, you know, what my memories are of, of those years um, at this point in my life. Uh, and my old memory, my old memories, <laughs> my old videos that I did for my 40th birthday countdown, they're still on the channel. If you want to look back, this is all pre-transition, so I was still uh, female presenting at the time. So, and, and, and I don't know if, I, I haven't looked back on them recently, so I don't know if any of the memories I'm going to recount now are going to be that different from, from those or not. But, uh, anyway... Uh, that's kind of what's going on with this with, with this video series. So starting with uh, my first 10 years uh, in, in, in being alive, uh, I was born in 1971, obviously if I'm turning 50. And uh, the, uh, the, the earliest, like I said, the earliest I can roll out was age three. And before that, um, I mean, I make this no secret that my mom and my dad were never married. They they met in a bar and hooked up, and nine months later, surprise. <laughs> uh, in fact, um, I do know that my mom didn't even know she was pregnant until she was about seven months along. Um, and it, she was told she was sterile, and so she never took precautions. And uh, I guess she wasn't as sterile as the doctors thought she was, and uh, here I am. Uh, anyway, so, you know, she wasn't married, she had me out of wedlock, moved back in with her parents after I was born, and, uh, my grandmother, her, her mom, my maternal grandmother, primarily was the one who raised me. My grandfather was around, he was more like my buddy than he was, uh, a parental figure. Uh, he was, he was my granddad, basically. He was, uh, I called that, because I grew up speaking German at home. Um, they emigrated from Europe in 1956, and so they still spoke German at home, and, uh, I called them Omi and Opi. So if I, if I refer to them that way, uh, you'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about. And, uh, grew up in, I was born and raised in Chicago, and, uh, we lived in a small two-bedroom apartment, uh, that my grandparents had been renting, and my mom, <laughs> my mom got one of the bedrooms after she moved back in, and my grandfather got the other one. My mom had the one off of the living room. My grandfather had the one off of the kitchen, 
Um, and my grandmother, her bed was in the dining room. <laughs> and my bed it was a little alcove off of the, the dining room, and that's where my bedroom was. Um, so it, it, it was a, a, a weird little setup, but uh, we made it work. Uh, my mom worked as a secretary and uh, made minimum wage at best. And uh, my grandparents were living off of my grandfather's social security, um, which I don't even know how much it was. I think when he passed, um, it was like $500 a month at that point. So it was, it obviously was less at the beginning of the seventies. I'm not sure how much it was, but they, you know, we were not living high on the hog by, by any means, uh, lived a, a lot of the nicer things that we had in our home. Uh, a lot of it we got through rummage sales and secondhand stores and things. And anything that was brand new was bought on layaway because credit cards weren't a thing yet. So, uh, you know, again, this is kind of like a setup of, of, of where I was, you know, where, where my life was as a child. Uh, one of my earliest actual memories was when I got my first um, big kid bed. Uh, my my grandparents, I don't know, I, it, the whole thing was really shady. <laughs> Because <laughs> I remember them delivering the, the bedroom set into my alcove and getting rid of my uh, my crib. Like, it was at night. It was after dark. Um, they had all the lights in the, in the apartment turned off as they were doing this and using flashlights to put it all together. Um, I, was, I remember hiding under the dining room table because I was terrified of the whole thing. I don't know exactly what was going on, but this was one of these really nice, fancy... Um, it was a four poster canopy bed, um, white and gold. It was like a, a real popular thing back in the early seventies. And I'll put a photo up here, um, uh, because I actually recently found, um, a picture of, of that bedroom set and I had the bed and I had the, the chest of drawers. I don't know where we got it, how we got it. I'm thinking it was some kind of a shady thing because of how they brought it into the apartment. I don't know. Uh, but... I do also remember that I was equally terrified and in love with the canopy on the damn thing. And my poor grandmother, I like she would the canopy would be up there and I'd be terrified it was gonna fall down and crush me. And so I'd scream and cry and take it off, take it off. And then a few days later I'd be like, Oh, I really miss that canopy. Can I have it back again? I I must have done that to my grandmother a good dozen times. <laughs> until she finally was like, make up your mind. One way or the other, it's up or it's down, or, you know, and that's it. And I think, ultimately, we ended up leaving it down. Uh, because I still, I could not get over the fear of it falling down and crushing me. It wouldn't have. Um, it was it was secured in the, uh, the top of the, the four posters and everything. There was no way it was going to fall. But I just, I could not get past that fear of it. Um, but it was just, it was just a cool, it was a cool bed. Um, it was a very, a, a, a very, a very feminine bed, but I didn't know that at the time. It, to my, to me, it was just a cool bed. So, um, and I, I had a lot of, uh, fun adventures in my, in my mind. I have a, a very active imagination, which is one of the reasons I'm a writer, uh, because of my active imagination. And <laughs> I made up all sorts of, of stories of it being a pirate ship and, and all sorts of, it, there, um, it, it was, it was a fun place to play, uh, as a kid. Um, and one of the other, and this was, I was, I was age three, um, at the time that this happened. And the next other memory that I have that I'm quite certain I was, I was three years old at the time, uh, as well as the last time I actually saw my dad. So while I didn't really know him that well, my grandmother, um, stayed in touch with him and they, he would occasionally come and take the two of us out for lunch or something. And, uh, that was, that was the interesting thing was that this memory was that we met and he actually parked down the street from our apartment. I guess we didn't want other people to know that I was in contact with my dad. I know we were trying to keep my mom um, away from knowing about this. She was supposedly she was supposed to be at work that day, and uh, we met him. I remember him picking me up and putting me on his shoulders. 
um, and carrying me to, to his car, and we drove out to a, um, basically we, I, I found this out years later, I did not know where we were when I was three, but, uh, we, we were eating in a restaurant, and I remember, like, really high, super high ceilings, and, and, and lots of plants and everything growing around, and a big, round, circular, um, table with a, like, the, it was like a booth around a table, and uh, the waiters all carried everything fancy on their on their hands and everything. And I was like, I, I remember being in awe of the of the wait staff because I'd never really been in a sit down restaurant at that point before, and it was just all very fascinating. And there was another um, kid there as well, who, in my mind at the time, because when I was three, I thought this child was like twelve. Like they were so big, they were so grown up. Um, turns out that that was my um, stepsister uh, Kim. And uh, she was only six. <laughs> just in my my perspective, I just thought she was way older than me. <laughs> um, and I did not know that he was with uh, another person uh, who had kids, and and then later on had uh, three kids with her as well. So I have three half sisters. I did not find out about this until much much later, and, and we'll we'll cover that uh, in in a later video. But uh, that day I think is cemented in my memory because of the fact that when we got home my mom had come home early from work found out that we were away with my dad and blamed me for whatever stupid reason my mom and I never got along let's put it that way she blamed me for being born with we, we won't go into all of that but she, re I remember her grabbing me and shaking me and saying, if you ever see that man again, you will never see your grandparents again. You are banned from this house. It just, just all this. It was a lot of shit. Uh, but uh, in retrospect, I'm kind of grateful that she did that because I now have that memory cemented in my brain that I might not otherwise not have remembered. And uh, so, there's, so there's that. Anyhow... Um, uh, going going beyond that, uh, the next thing um, I can clearly remember uh, happening in my life was that I learned how to read. Uh, I was about four years old, and I remember. And this one, this one's another one that's that's clearly cemented in my memory, with no trauma to cause it, thankfully. Uh, but I remember watching Sesame Street, and they had. Uh, interspersed in Sesame Street, you have all these different things. You've got the, the, the Muppets sequences, and you've got these little animated sequences and things. And they had this um, phonics sequence where the little... Um, I know they had the guy with the typewriter and stuff, and they had some phonics with him. But then they also had one where it was a little guy with, like, these fat little legs. And he would, like, they'd have a word up, and they'd have, you know, very clearly delineated with the different letters of the word. And the guy would go underneath each letter and just kind of sound each one out. And I knew my alphabet at this point. So this this is where things started clicking for me. So he went under each letter, and he sounded them out. Uh, and the word was milk. And he was like, mm, eh, ulk, you know. And then he started saying it faster. And then in my mind, I was like, wait a minute and it just clicked and I went and I grabbed my Sesame Street storybook uh I took my favorite story in there as like Dora uh and a, it was a diamond D and a dragon and her de dearest daddy and a, a lot of D words in the story but it was a it was a proper story with with, with full paragraphs and stuff it wasn't just like a line and a picture um and I went through it word by word sounded everything out and then once I figured out the whole story, I ran and got, grabbed my grandmother. And I don't know if it was like the same day or the next day or something. Uh, and said, I'm going to read you this story. And I still remember her mouth just, you know, hit the floor like, what? Wait a minute. And then she started giving me other things to read. And and I was reading. And from then on, I just gra I grabbed every book I could in the house. <laughs> um, it is sometimes not appropriate ones. <laughs> Because my, my mom had a lot of Barbara Cartlands and things, so there so there was that. But I so I was reading, and not long after that, uh, my grandmother uh, took me to Vancouver, uh, basically a town called Coquitlam outside of Vancouver, um, to visit a, a family friend of hers. Uh, well, okay, we knew him, or I knew him as a family friend. He was something a little bit more than a family friend to her. I you know there are there are things I did not catch up on. 
but they had met in Europe years before, and it, let's just say that some unfaithful things were <laughs> happening. My grandfather was aware of it, but I, you know, I, I, I don't know all the story of what was behind it. All I knew is that my grandmother put me on a plane with her, and we flew to, we actually flew to Seattle, and then he came to pick us up in Seattle and, and drove us across the border to Vancouver because I think back in those days, if you were in the U.S., there they, they didn't require passports to go to Canada because uh, I know I didn't have a passport until I was six years old, but I knew I was in Canada at age four and they made me go to kindergarten. I was, I was four or five, but I think I was, I'm pretty sure I was four, if I remember right. And we stayed there um, off and on for about nine months. I know we came back for Christmas because we were always... We, I never had Christmas in Canada. I only had Christmas in Chicago. So I know we came back for, for Christmas and then came back, went back again afterward. Um, and I had a good friend. Uh, he, was, he was born in Hong Kong. And he, his name was Alex. And we, uh, in the kindergarten class, we, um, we would exchange favors. He struggled to tie his shoes. So I taught him, or I, I tied his shoes for him. And he would give me half of his orange. Uh, out of his lunch, which was kind of neat. And so I had some, you know, I had a couple of good friends there and I had to learn French. It was, it was weird. It was a Catholic school, uh, Our Lady of Fatima in Coquitlam. And um, they, they, I think their, their entire curriculum was either bilingual or all done in French or something. And the kids in kindergarten had to learn French in order to, to be able to follow the curriculum after that. And so I remember learning French a lot. <laughs> and so at that point I was I was fluent in German, fluent in English, and I was starting to gain fluency in French. But then after the nine months um, and something happened between my grandmother and my uncle Billy, and yeah, again, the, the weird stuff was going on there. And so went back to Chicago, never went back to, to Canada again, never saw Uncle Billy again. Um, I liked the guy, he was, he was real nice to me. Um, and uh, he built me a sandbox, and <laughs> it was it was it was an interesting time in my life. Went back to Chicago, and that was the that was the kind of the end of that. Um, but I started uh, really diving into books and reading and things. I think my grandmother eventually got me a, a library card because we kind of ran out of books for me to read. And my mom got me an encyclopedia set, which I started reading cover to cover. Um, eventually I started first grade, uh, and, and I was, I was like six, seven at the time, uh, by, by the time I, so I, I kind of skipped a year of school, because I think in Canada the kids started earlier with kindergarten, or maybe they did a couple of years of kindergarten before first grade, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I was, I definitely know there was at least a good year between me leaving kindergarten in Canada and me starting school. And I, and I started school a month late because my grandmother forgot to send me, like, whoops. Um, so there there was that. And uh, that's actually where I got in trouble uh, with my first grade teacher. Because Well, first of all, my first grade teacher, I remember her sitting me down to, to assess where I'm at with math and, and reading and everything. And me and numbers didn't get along. Um, and I didn't even find out until years later that I, that I have dyscalculia where I, I seen, it, it's kind of, um, like dyslexia, but with numbers and spatial awareness and uh, a bunch of, you know, it, it affects a bunch of things. Um, and I, so I struggled with, with arithmetic and mathematics a lot, um, as a kid, but, uh, reading was, you know, I was, I was great on that. And I remember her giving me a, um, Dick and Jane book, um, to assess my reading. And I was like, I just, I just, I remember looking at her like, are you serious with this book with me? She's like, yes, yes, come on, try it. And so I just like, in the most bored tone, like, see Dick run, run Dick run, see Jane run, you know, like that, you know, like it, she was like, okay, it, after a couple of minutes, she just kind of pulled the book. From her. She's like, okay, okay, I get it. You're, you can read. <laughs> um, and, uh, I actually had to, um, convince the school librarian um it by the time i was in second grade we were uh, allowed to visit the library but the second graders could only check out books from the the children's library so they had a, a separate room with all the picture books um and with the with you know it's for all the younger kids the younger kid books and uh, those those books were for the younger kids up until third grade and then after third grade you could check out books from the rest of the library 
and I read through all of those picture books like in a week. <laughs> They, they were just too easy. And so I finally went to the library and I was like, can I pick out one of these other books because I'm getting bored. And uh, she actually gave me uh, uh, an assignment. She's like, okay, I'll let you pick up one. You will do a book report. And if I'm satisfied that you comprehended and you understood what this book, uh, what, what you read, then um, I'll let you check out these other books. And I uh, sure. And it was a Hardy Boys mystery book. I remember that. And uh, I forget exactly which one, but it was, I do know it was Hardy Boys. And, uh, you know, read through it in a week and wrote up a book report. And I was like, here you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you clearly understand how to read. So um, I was, you know, I, I'm a prolific reader. And I, I, because of how much crap was going on in my family there was a lot of fights there was there, there was a lot of trauma going on in my family i spent a lot of time reading i i read you know so many books spent so much time at the library um i remember i got like going back to getting in trouble in first grade uh with with books i was reading as my teacher caught me reading a barbara Cartland book <laughs> that i grabbed off my mom's shelf and she had to call my grandmother and, and bring her in. Like, this is not appropriate reading material for a child. And my grandma was like, oops, okay. <laughs> so my mom was like, okay, here, try this instead. And she gave me A Princess of Mars by Ed Grace Burroughs. And so that was my introduction to science fiction and um, brought me a lifetime of love of science fiction. I read, you know, I've read so much uh, of Ed Grace Burroughs books, like all of the Martian books, obviously Tarzan. I actually haven't read all the Tarzan books, come to think of it. I've read, like, the first two, I think. And they're so different from the movies. If you've never read the Tarzan books, read at least the first one, because it is so different from the movies. I was actually surprised, because I know he goes to America and he learns how to drive a car. There's, like, all this stuff that's not in the movies. Um, and the, and the, um, the, uh, the people that raise him... They're, well, I mean, okay, or the species that raises him. I forget the name of them at this point, but they're not gorillas. They're always portrayed as gorillas in the movies, but they're not gorillas. They're not chimpanzees either. They're um, some kind of like a, a Australopithecus type. Like they're, they're, they're not a fully evolved Homo sapien, but they're not, uh, a, they're not a, a, a gorilla or one of the other great apes. Um, they have a language. They can speak. They can make tools etc so they're 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 kind of a um intermediate species between gorillas and or between the other great apes and, and humans they, they're definitely a hominid of some kind and uh, that's where a lot of movies get that wrong and so when i read the books i was like the books are so much better than the movies well, go figure right <laughs> they usually are um but anyway, so uh, I, I digress there. But I, I do love reading um, sci-fi and everything. And uh, so, and and to round out the whole decade, oh, I round out the decade. I actually have to go back to age six again because right before I started school, before I started first grade, um, I actually spent a summer in Germany. Um, so, like I said, we were pretty poor growing up. I. I definitely did not have the money to fly to Europe <laughs> and it, even when we went to Canada um, I know Uncle Billy was the one who paid for our flights and um, for Germany my grandmother her brothers and sisters pulled together their resources to send us tickets and I think back in those days um, either children flew discounted or free or something it's like i think one of the reasons i got to go with is because it wasn't very expensive for me to come with because i was under 12 and so um so yeah i got a chance to go there um my grandmother i was with my grandmother part of the time but then she just kind of left me with her family um and went off um somewhere uh, without me for a while as well and Years later, I found out that she was also reconnecting with another old flame of hers. <laughs> she she got around, let me tell you. <laughs> but I got to meet um, 
my my grandmother's siblings so my great aunts and uncles and their kids and and my cousin like i i know there's like first cousin second cousin like whatever in english but in german it's like it's it's generational so my grandmother's um brothers and sisters i called aunt and uncle and their kids i called aunt and uncle and all the kids from my generation i called like they were my cousins and so, but I got to, I got to meet a bunch of them and spend time with them. I'm still in touch with some of them. Uh, my grandmother's one sister, Lena, and her family, um, they live in, in Southern uh, Germany and um, they're the ones that I've kind of kept in touch with. We, we still exchange Christmas packages every year and write letters back and forth. Um, my grandmother's nephew, uh, my uncle uh, Adolf, and no, he was not named after that Adolf. He was named after his dad, Adolf. And his dad was not that Adolf. <laughs> just, you know, uh, Adolf Wille is the is their family name, and so it was a popular name back in those days. I don't think kids are being named Adolf anymore, but back in the back in those days, they still were. And again, you know, he was named after his dad. Uh, but he was always he, he he's kind of, he's an interesting guy because um, he he's conservative, but he's open minded. At the same time, it's uh, it's weird, and and I'll talk more about him um, later <laughs> in 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 later videos and stuff. Um, anyway, and then so so I was six years old the first time I went to Germany with my grandmother, and then to round out this video, I got to go again when I was ten. Um, and this time, the uh, the old flame that she had reconnected with, he was quite a well-to-do gentleman. Um, his family, he came from money, he was well-educated, he worked as an engineer most of his life, made a good salary, um, and, and basically was better off than we were, um, financially. I think he owned a couple of houses, you know, uh, where we had this, you know, dinky little apartment in Chicago, so <laughs> to, to, to me, he was rich. Um, I, you know, I, I would say he was, he was, you know, upper middle class, um, type of gentleman. And he paid for us to fly back out. And once again, my grandmother dropped me with her, her relatives. Uh, and I got to spend the summer with my cousins and everything. And she went off and did her own thing. Um, and that year, that was a fun year. Because um, I was actually, my, my grandmother's youngest sister, Erika, ran a pub in this little farming community and and the way these communities are set up in germany at least in hessen uh out the outskirts of frankfurt um you have this little town where all the farmers live um and they have their their um bauernhof like a, it's kind of like a court like their house is built around a courtyard and they have all their animals in the courtyard and stuff um and it's all within the town and then around the town are all the the farm fields and everything and so she ran the pub in the town that all the farmers would come to every, it was sort of like, like every Saturday night, the farmers would take the, uh, um, you know, the night off and go out and drink and gamble and, and, you know, get together and stuff and have dinner, uh, in her little pub. And, uh, it, some of the families who weren't farmers in the community that were like the postal workers and that kind of thing. Uh, everyone would order takeout from her that were that weren't going to eat in the pub. Um, the the, ma, the the wives and the kids and everything uh, got to eat, and she always made um, a, in German is a Hühnchen mit Pommes frites, or basically which was deep frying chicken. Uh, she would she would deep fry um, the chicken, and then she would deep fry the French fries in in the same oil as the chicken, um, so it had all the same herbs and everything. And, it was good food. Uh, she could cook. <laughs> it was delicious stuff. Um, and so I would, I would get to sit in the pub. There was this one little bench in the corner that, uh, against the bar, and I would sit in the far corner and sit there, and I get to talk with the farmers and um, and stay up until two in the morning because that it was too. The, the pub was right underneath where she lived. Their their apartment, her and her husband had above the above the pub. Uh, was, uh, it, it was, the, the pub was noisy enough that I couldn't sleep anyway, so I didn't bother trying, and because my grandmother wasn't around to enforce a bedtime, it was like, oh, I get to stay up. Uh, but because of the bad hours and everything, eventually my, my 
my tante Eri, she was like, okay, you shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't be staying up with me. And so she actually handed me off to a friend of hers in the neighboring town who had a couple of kids and she fed all the neighborhood kids and everything. And so I just kind of stayed with her and hung out with them and got to go hiking um, in the, in the woods every day and climb trees and pick berries. And we'd walk to the next town over where they had a little store and we bought, bought, bought ice cream and stuff. And, um, I, re I remember at one point, yeah, we, we had to, we, there was always one point in the forest where we stopped and turned around and I was like, Hey, it's early. Can we keep going? And they were like, no, we can't. The Americans live over there. And they were like, you know, like all terrified of the Americans. And I'm like, why are you scared of them? I'm American. And, and they were like, wait, you are? What? <laughs> God, apparently I, I hadn't come up yet in conversation and. My German was fluent enough that they had no idea that I was American. <laughs> and uh, apparently her, I think the parents had told the kids to, basically they didn't want the kids to um, bother the Americans, uh, which I think they were basically officers, uh, uh, American soldier, uh, like officers in the American, like I, I don't know if they were army or uh, probably army. And uh, so there, it was officer housing and stuff. It was, it was basically like a little s row of suburban houses. And I was like, oh, come on, let's go. And so we kept hiking and we walked past these houses. And there were families out in the backyard barbecuing and like very American stuff. And I would I would wave and say hi. And I had to translate between them and, and the kids I was with. And the kids were like, oh, I guess these guys aren't going to come, you know, grab us and eat us and things. Because <laughs> apparently they thought that Americans ate children. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, that was, that was kind of fun, but it was, I, I kind of brokered this peace between the kids and the, and, and the American families over there, because, yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, but that was, that was a memorable summer, and that was a, that was a good way for me to, uh, to round out that decade. And, uh, yes, this is a, this is a bit of a long video, uh, <laughs> and, and the next three probably will be somewhat long as well because I'm recounting entire decades, and then after that hopefully they'll, they'll be a little bit shorter videos after that, uh, since I'm just gonna go one year at a time instead of ten years at a time. But, uh, I hope you, like, if you're still watching, thank you, uh, for being here, thank you for watching my videos, and, um, please, uh, if you're, if you're enjoying these, give a thumbs up. If you have questions, want to know more information, uh, want to tell me off, whatever, you know, leave a comment down below. I always appreciate it. If you do enjoy my videos, please, uh, subscribe and check out all my links down below. Uh, check out some of the stuff I write and, uh, until the next video, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.